I'm going to explain to you what you need to know about reptile lighting. And if you stick around till the end, I'm going to show you how to avoid a mistake that people often make, even though they have all of their components correct. Now lighting is a critical part to keeping our little scaly friends healthy and happy. And it can be broken down into three main categories. These are heating, ultraviolet, and visible light. Now these all work together to help us simulate that big giant fireball in the sky. Reptiles are different to a lot of other animals in that they're ectothermic. They rely on their outside environment so heavily in order to process their daily functions and gain the majority of their energy. So when we're trying to replicate that big ball of sun in the sky, uh, we need to make sure we're doing a good job of it because it's really critical to their entire being. Now all of the light on earth that we have around us is on a massive spectrum. So it starts over at the ultraviolet spectrum, you have UVC, B, A, and then you have your visible light. That is everything we can physically see with our human eyes. All the colours, everything like that sits within there. It's a huge part of the spectrum. And then we finally have our infrared. Infrared's invisible just like UV is and that is going to be your heat. Now natural sunlight has a very specific wavelength in which follows that spectrum. So here's a chart right here to show you exactly what the sun produces and this is what we're aiming to replicate. We don't want to go outside of those little barriers much at all because then we're not giving something that's truly authentic to real sunlight and we can cause issues if that occurs. So starting with one of the most important parts of reptile lighting and that is of course our UVB. Now this is important for reptiles metabolizing calcium and a whole bunch of other bodily functions they actually go through. But UVB and UV light in general is probably the most dangerous wavelengths of light uh, that we could be messing with. It is incredibly important we don't skip out on any quality when it comes to buying UV lights. You know, you never want to buy something cheap off eBay or anything like that. Always go for a quality brand that has done their research and put in a lot of time and effort to replicating uh, what the sun's actually trying to output because as soon as you start dipping into UVC, it could be extremely dangerous for you and your reptile. It could cause blindness, death, other sorts of skin issues, cancers, all sorts can go wrong with the wrong UV light. So never ever skip out on that quality. And these days you really shouldn't be using anything other than a high quality T5 high output lamp just like this. I like to use the Arcadia brand stuff or the Reptisun stuff. They're usually the ones that are best suited uh, to our reptiles. Never ever use those little coil bulbs or anything like that. They are just a waste of time unless you're keeping a very small species that doesn't require much space or UV at all. Always stick to these linear T5 lamps. They're going to be a much better option. In recent years as well, there has been a new influx of LED UV lamps. This is very exciting. It's definitely the future of where our UVB is going to come from. Unfortunately for the moment, it is such new technology. It hasn't been long-term tested, so we can't accurately say if it's good or if it's bad. We need to spend some time and figure out these things before we start recommending them to everyone to use. Another option for UVB is your metal halide lamps or your mercury vapor lamps. Now, they sound good in theory because they have both heat and UV all in one package, so you shouldn't really have to think about it. But to be honest, if you're trying to do multiple things at once in one item, it doesn't do any of those individual things all that well. The UV output can be really different between individual lamps of the same brand and it's really hit and miss as to whether or not it's going to be perfect for your reptile or not. One of the amazing things about these good quality T5 lamps is how long they can actually last. Now on the box it'll say replace after one year but if you have a solar meter like I do or if used you actually test these things years later after you've first installed them and they can still be putting out some really good levels of UV and uh, not really decaying much over time. Whereas most other sort of lamps you'll come across, you know, six months is maybe the max you're going to get out of its UVB output. But these things, they just keep on going. And uh, if you've got a 10% like I've got in here, maybe over your bearded dragon or something like that, as it starts to degrade, you can then move that to another species that requires maybe a bit lower UV and keep using it for another couple of years. It's much more sustainable and longer lasting product. Now the UV intensity is also another important aspect to consider. 
each different species of reptile is going to have a different UV need requirement. So you need to make sure you get the best thing suited to your animal. Lists and other resources online that you can check out or even books and you can find out exactly the exposure that your reptile needs and that will depend on what light you buy. So you can get a 10%, a 5% and all these percentages basically just mean how much UVB it's actually putting out. There's distance recommendations which means at this sort of distance your reptile is going to experience this amount of UV. So as long as you put it into those parameters and make sure that's right, your reptile is going to be absolutely loving it. Now overexposure can be just as damaging as underexposure. So always make sure if you set up UVB in a tank, there's places where the animal can get away from it. Now I'll typically have a tank and I'll set up at least a third away from the UV light so it always has an area where it doesn't experience any. It can move back and forth and decide on its own gradient and how much it wants to expose itself. Along with that, you can have hides and other places like that to also add this effect. Now, underexposure of UVB is gonna cause issues as well. The biggest one being metabolic bone disease, and that is where your reptile's bones don't form properly or they start to lose their structure. It's a very horrific disease, and it's all caused from not having a good UV source. Now our next category is of course visible light. Something that's really quite overlooked in a lot of reptile keepers collections but it's extremely important as much as everything else. Now who doesn't love having an enclosure that's nice and bright just like it would be outside? Well, this has effects for your reptiles as well. The first being hormone production. A lot of reptiles base their cycles and when they're going to breed and when they're the most active on how much light is outside. So if you give them as much light as you can, they're probably going to be brighter colored, more active, more healthy, and just having a better experience. So this is critically important and there's lots of different versions of this you can do. The first is some sort of LED bar just like this. Now, Arcadia make the Jungle Dawn Light, which is an incredibly high-powered, beautiful piece of equipment that just lights up your enclosure and can grow plants very, very well. But this is one aspect of reptile lighting where you can actually go a bit cheaper in the route you take. Thankful thing is, when it comes to visible light, we've been doing that for a long time in our houses and everywhere else that we actually use as people every single day. So it's a very uh, far along technology and it means there's lots of different iterations you can use, like a little bulb just like this to have a bit more of a spot lamp effect. So you can get the reptile brand and stuff like the Arcadia Jungle Dawns, which is probably most ideal because it is designed for reptiles. But you can also go on eBay, go down to your local hardware store and find a light that is 6,500 Kelvin uh, cool white color. And then try and get you know one that is the brightest that you can find that'll fit in your enclosure well or on top of your enclosure. And that'll work absolutely great as well. It's pretty well the same thing. It's just the hard part is finding that really good light for your enclosure. So this one here is actually a plant propagation light. Got this off eBay, works incredibly well. It's pretty much just like the Jungle Dawn design, just a bit cheaper. And then I also found this one too on eBay as well. It's got four pins uh, on each row and it, uh, it really lights up things amazingly well also. And again, this is just another hydroponics grow light uh, used for the plant growing industry. And it works incredibly well for plant growth in your tanks and for lighting up your reptiles. So there's a few options there. You can also go down to Bunnings and places like that and they have all sorts of little LED strip lights and things like that you can use. So it's a very easy part of the lighting to actually add to your reptiles and there's a lot of different options so you can spend as little or as much as you like. Are you tired of spending all your hard earned cash on lights for your reptiles? Well all you need is one of these simple reptile re our final category is of course heating. Incredibly important for reptiles, being cold-blooded animals, they rely on their environment to warm themselves up. Now there's a few different ways we can do that. First is with an incandescent flood lamp just like this or even a halogen lamp uh, and also there is things like infrared heat emitters and other sorts of lights in that sort of category. But you can imagine a reptile typically is a diurnal animal or they'll come out during the day to enjoy the sunlight. When you walk into the sun, you can feel it's bright, it's warm, and that is what we want to replicate. So 
When it comes to heating our reptiles, we should be doing it through light as well, as it's the most natural thing for the animal. So these lamps are great, and again, this is something where you can go a little bit on the cheaper side. Now, here at Bunnings, the local hardware store, we have things like this, our Philips flood lamps. These only cost a couple bucks for a two-pack. These will last a long time, generally quite a lot more than most reptile branded equivalents. Uh, unfortunately, these things are starting to become harder to come across. They're starting to phase them out, and eventually we will have to go over to our reptile branded stuff. But for now, if you can go out and find something just like this, it's gonna work amazingly well. Now, the other side of reptile heating is gonna be things that don't actually produce any light at all, like your uh, deep heat projectors like this or your ceramic heat lamps. Now these should really be only used at night when you don't want to produce any light at all. Now in the olden days of reptiles, we would often use a lamp just like this. We'd paint it red or get a lamp that has red glass over it and use that at night, as red is typically a color spectrum that uh, doesn't inhibit the eyesight as much as a normal full bright spectrum daylight would. Uh, but reptiles can actually still see these red lamps. It's always going to be better to have the enclosure completely dark, and that is why these things are so much better for heating at night time. Now, these DP projectors produce a wavelength of heat in where it actually penetrates through the skin a lot deeper than your ceramic heat emitters will. The infrared spectrum is quite interesting. You have infrared A, B, and C. A and B is what you're typically going to find in sunlight. It's going to really go through the skin and get nice and deep into the tissue and feel a lot better for the animal. Whereas your infrared C is typically going to warm up the environment and the air a little bit more. It's not ha really having that deep penetrative uh, effect. Well, now we understand our three different categories of reptile lighting. We can put them all together and give our reptiles exactly what they need. And this leads us to the big mistake people make when they set up their reptile lighting. Now imagine you walk outside, you stand in the sun, and it's cold. It just wouldn't make any sense. But that is what people are unexpectedly doing when they set up their reptiles. They get each of these different pieces, which when coming from the sun, is all together in one package. But what they do is they get each individual piece, they spread it apart in different spots on the tank. So if the reptile wants to heat up, it has to go over here. But the UV light's over here. It just doesn't make any sense. We need to bring our lights together and have a spectrum in where the reptile can get the most exposure and then move away and get the least exposure. You don't want to have your lamps scattered around different parts. You want it to all overlap as much as possible so your reptile can get the most natural-like benefit from each of those items. Now, this is just covering the basics of reptile lighting. It is a complicated topic that we're constantly learning more and more about as time goes on and as technology gets better and better. So if you wanna keep track of all that, make sure you do your own research, go into Facebook groups like Reptile Lighting, I'll leave a link in the description below, and learn more about this incredible way to keep your reptiles healthy and happy. Otherwise, thanks for watching guys. My name's Cooper, I'll see you in the next video.